What's up, Foundry? How we doing? Hope you are settling into school and various things that you're doing now. Had a nice little day off yesterday and or Monday, and now back to it again, I guess, right? Well, we all have to keep going, and I trust that you are continuing to go. You know, we've been talking about fear, and in fact, I'm going to close up talking about that this week. Um, hey, if you've missed some and you want to go back, I've got all these on our web page. <coughs> Carrie puts this out every week, and you may miss some. If you'd like to catch up, hey, free. Uh, what a deal. Go to the webpage, unabaptist.com, look on Foundry, homepage, and you'll see, I think I've got all of them. Now, I will probably um, take them down next week and start over with a new series. Not sure what it's going to be, but I'll work on that this week, and we'll go from there. But uh, it's my privilege to be able to talk to you. Those that are, you are uh, taking advantage of this, thank you so much. And I hope these things have been helpful to you. They're helpful to me. I mean, honest to goodness, and I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I constantly need God's Word in my life. I'm a little bit older than you, been through life a little bit more than you have, a whole lot more. That does not devalue the necessity of God's Word in my life. Every day, I need it to encourage me. I need it to strengthen me. I need it to um, reflect on my life. I need it to criticize me. I need it to uh, bring truth and show where there is darkness and bring light. So <clears throat> I just want to encourage you in your studies, and you've got lots of them, college or high school, don't neglect God's Word. Because studying in that all through your life will yield benefits for all eternity. That's so incredibly important. Well, back to our, <clears throat> back to our study. We're talking about fear. A couple of weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, we talked about phobias. Remember that? Might even been last week. I lose track of things. Week to week. And uh, we were talking about phobias. Phobias are, are those things that are irrational fears. Irrational fears. When I did youth as a pastor back in uh, Indiana, a number of years ago, 20 years ago probably, close to it anyway, uh, I had a girl in there, and she was a bright, bright kid, very sharp, very talented, great personality, a real leader in a lot of ways. But there was one thing that was, that was in her life that had been there for a long time. She was afraid of dogs. She had not just a fear, but an irrational fear of dogs. So much so, if she heard a dog barking in the neighborhood, she would start to scream and cry. If she saw a dog out, it, she, would, she would lose it. I mean, lose it. We went on a mission trip, and we had to be aware of that because this irrational fear, if there was a dog anywhere, we lost her. I mean, she was useless. She would almost you know, crawl up into a kind of a fetal position and just be absolutely terrorized. She finally, I think her, her uh, family helped her to go to a psychologist and work through those fears when she was a teenager. <clears throat> and she's fine now, so far as I know. But that irrational fear got a hold of her life, a phobia, and... Um, nearly took it away in a, lot of, in a lot of respects. Well, this is not what I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about phobias. I'm talking about fear that's, ne that's a necessity, that's important to you. What? Fear is important? 
I thought fear is something we wanted to get rid of. I thought it was something we wanted to go the other direction with. Well, that's true most of the time. And especially irrational fears. But maybe, maybe I would use the opposite of this and call this a rational fear. You ever heard it called that before? A rational fear. Something that makes sense. Now think about it for a second. If you have a irrational fear of fire, let's say, anytime someone lights a match or you see something go up, a fireplace, you don't want to be around it. You, your, your anxiety level goes up. Your, your heart begins to pound and sweat. And that's an irrational, irrational fear of fire. But is it not true that you should have a rational fear? fear of fire sure you should what, what, what am i what do i mean well we should be aware that fire has the ability to do great damage it can destroy and it can kill even if it's left unattended that rational fear of fire prevents you from playing with it, doing dumb things with it. I was watching the news this morning. And you know, out west, I don't know if you're aware of it, you should be, if you look at the news, out west in California and in the northwest and other places, but especially California, they're having fires like they've never had fires. I mean, it's terrible. The devastation on the land is just amazing. Now, if you know that, you should probably make plans not to do some things. But there's a number of people who said, it won't bother me. It's not a big deal. It's not a problem. I know I can deal with it. And so they went camping in the Sierras mountains. And this morning, the National Guard is having to pull helicopters and try to get dozens of people to safety because now they're trapped by fire. And unless they get them out, they will die. I also watched on the same broadcast last year, you know, these gender reveal parties where uh, parents will have a party and they'll reveal if it's a boy or a girl and they don't know and they reveal it at the same time to all their friends. Well, they had someone that thought there would be a great idea to um, do kind of a fireworks display. The only problem is they were doing it in the same dry place of California last year and they blew it open, but it, something went wrong and it caught fire. Would you believe that fire destroyed so much land and property? It was an $8 million fire from that person who did not have a rational fear of what a fire could potentially do. See, it's important that you have an understanding of things. Take another example. Let's go back to dogs again. You don't have to have an irrational fear, but you need a rational fear of dogs. What does that mean? That means when you are out and you're walking or you're jogging or you're with your friends in a park and you see a stray dog and you don't know where it came from and you don't know what kind of nature it has, you don't have to start throwing rocks and sticks at it, but you don't want to bend over and put his face in your, in your face and say, hello there, puppy dog. Why? Because that dog may just go, Bow! that's it. That's scary. Woke, woke some of you up. But that dog may, may take a big, big bite out of your face. And so what you do is what I do. I see a dog First thing that I do is I stand tall, as tall as I can. I stand tall 
And um, if they're barking at me, I ignore it. I just keep walking. If they're growling at me, I may turn and say, go home, and try to sound authoritative. If they just come up to me, I put my hand down to their nose so they can smell what I smell like and see what kind of disposition they have. You see, there is a rational fear of an unknown dog, and you deal with it accordingly, right? Well, let me, I've been talking too long about this introduction. You get the picture. I want to talk to you about a good fear, a rational fear, a fear that will make the difference in your life, and that is you should fear God. What? What do you mean fear God? Should I be like, ooh? Well, maybe you should if you know that you are way out of God's will. What I'm talking about is a rational fear of God, an understanding of the presence, power, and authority of God. When you understand the presence, power, and authority of God, you don't just say, I can do what I want to. It's no big deal. Hey, man, what's up? Man? What's up, God? Hey. No. You understand that God is looking and inspecting your life at all times and in all ways, and he knows those deep areas of sinful rebellion. You know he loves you, and he know, you know he wants the best for you, but you just, just don't just say, well, I can do anything I want to because God loves me, and so it's not. No, that's not fearing God uh, rationally or respectfully. It's saying, God, you are sovereign. God, you are in charge. God, you know the best. God, you are the authority in my life. That's fearing God. Well, why should you fear God? Because he's bigger than you? Because he's more powerful than you? Because he can squash you like a bug? No, that's, that's not... That's not the kind of fear. That's not a rational fear of God. That's not a, and when I mean rational, I mean an understanding of who God is. So it creates a behavior in your mind and in your life. So why is God worthy of our rational fear, of our reverence, of our respect? Well, let me give you three verses. First one is, talks about that he created all things. Now, why is that a big deal? Because you've never created anything, nor will you in your life. You cannot. Creation, you've made lots of things, but you've never created something because creation means taking nothing, which I can't even show you nothing. Because even though I can show you the air, that's something. But it's taking nothing and making something. God didn't just make something. He made this incredibly intricate universe. He created all things. Psalm 33 says, The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. He assigned the seas its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. Let the whole world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. Psalm 33, 6 through 9. Why should we fear God? Because his power is evidenced in everything that you see in the universe. Everything. And even those small subatomic things that you cannot visually see, they're there. Every quark was made by God. Should you respect someone? Should you stand in awe of someone? Should you rationally fear that person? You betcha. Not only that, mm, this gets a little more important. But we should rationally fear God because he has power over life and eternity. Matthew 10, 28. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That's a rational fear. That is 
a fire I don't want to play with. I don't want to dance around. I don't want to camp near. You understand? God is in charge of judging and assigning an eternal assignment for every person ever born on the earth. And you will judge that through what you've done with the Son, what you've done with Jesus. Have you believed in him? Have you followed him? Have you surrendered to him, given him your life? What have you done? And how have you lived your life as a result? Is it really reflecting what you believe? Or is it just something that you're doing on a Sunday or some day of the week, but you're not ever following through? You see, respect God because he is the one. Nobody in this world has power over your eternal soul, but God does. And then lastly, connected to that, we'll stand before him someday in judgment. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we've done in this earthly body. Should we rationally and respectfully revere God? Fear God and revere him? Absolutely. We should. Do we? Uh, we do sometimes we don't. Because rational in order to be rational, you got to be doing what? You got to be thinking. You got to be thinking if you're going to be rational. Irrational says, I don't think, I just react. And much, much of our lives is irrational because we don't think. Well, what are the results from fearing God? What are the results? Well, let's look at it. Proverbs 1 7. It'll enable us to grow. In true wisdom, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Fear of the Lord is the foundation. It's the, it's the building block of knowledge. You want to learn what really is important? You don't do it just by learning calculus. You learn it by calculating who God is. Did you like that? I just thought of that. You need to know who God is and you need to know him in such a way that you respectfully fear, rationally fear, awesomely fear God. It also helps us to keep out of trouble. Proverbs 24, 14, Blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. Blessed are those who fear to do wrong. Man, I'll tell you, are you going to have choices this week and all through this year? Should I go to that party? Okay. Do you fear God? What's going on at that party? What's the behavior? What's going to be the point of the party? Who's going to be there? What, what could you be asked to do? Those who fear to do wrong also fear the Lord. There's rational fear there. Well, let me give you another one. It prevents us from sinning. Exodus 20, 20. This is Moses talking to God. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them. He's ta actually talking to the people. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them. For God has come in this way to test you. And so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. Again, a rational fear of God. A rational fear of fire. If I know that the fire is all around California and I go to the woods, guess what? The woods may catch on fire. So what will you do? Rationally, you'll say, I think I'll skip this weekend. But if you're, if you're not rational, you're going to get stuck. If you think about it, it keeps you out of the fire. Okay? One more. Last one, we receive God's mercy and compassion when we, re when we fear God. Psalm 103, 11, for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. You want to experience God's love? Learn more about him. And the more you learn more about him, the more you will revere him, the more you have a rational fear and respect for who God is. And when you do, 
you will experience more of his love. Not that he loves you more. You understand that in Jesus Christ, he can't love you any more than he can right now. He loves you perfectly and completely. However, you'll experience, you will know it, it will benefit you. You'll be aware of it when you rationally, respectfully, awesomely fear God. Well, I hope this has been a help to you. It's been a help to me. I need to be reminded of this as well. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. God bless you. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.